Hello and welcome to the Archers Arena for another WBBL clash in this fascinating season. On this fine Saturday afternoon, the Cardiff Met Archers welcomed the Oakland Wolves to King Coyd campus. The Wolves are on a six-game losing streak, but came up victorious in the last fixture between these two in November. That game was as close as it gets, only a two-point win, but a W all the same. That day, we saw Georgia Smith flurry 32 points. Will Steph Collins have found an answer within her defensive strategy for today? All to come here from Archers Arena. Oakland boast a three-pronged attack as dangerous as anyone in this league. Georgia Smith, Cassidy Gould and Grace George. One of each leads every single statistic across the box score for the Wolves. They find themselves towards the bottom of the standings, perhaps due to the weakness surrounding them in the roster. So if one of those has a bad game, normally it tends to fall apart. We'll see if the Archers can manage it. The Archers, last time out, came off a huge morale-boosting win against the Manchester Mystics. The Northern side had no answer for Lauren Psyche. She boasted her fourth triple-double of the season. It was a true team effort, though, with four starters ending up in double figures for the Met outfit. Shannon Hatch put up a metronomic 24 points, extending her lead atop the mid-range scoring leaders for the WBBL. Izzy Bunyan, the homegrown US-bound starlet, put on a show at both ends, making people take note of why people everywhere are so excited by this young athlete. 19 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals and 2 blocks, filling up that box score. Anyone's been listening to me recently with these Archers fixtures this year will be tired of my praise of Izzy Bunny, and I'm sure. But that game, I feel, is a perfect example of why I've been so excited by the developments in her game this season. Her defensive versatility, picking rebounds out of the air and protecting the rim. Those two blocks really don't tell the whole story about how she impacted shot makers, how she changed the way the offense could drive at the basket. If the Archers can bring those three players together today, I'm sure we're in for a fantastic game of basketball. Neither team today, of course, sitting in the standings where they want to be. The Archers and the Oakland Wolves hoping to rise up before the season's end. Steph Collins has aspirations of the playoffs. That's been the target since day one. Shannon Hatch, possibly in her last season here at Cardiff Met hoping to finish it with an off-season to remember. Oakland Wolves have had strength in the past, but this season faltered a little behind the Australian trio. It's been a difficult season for them, 13 losses. They'll be hoping to turn that all around today. A six-game losing streak is nothing any coach wants, but of course, this could be the one to turn that all around we are getting closer by the minute as the teams start to get ready for what will be a fantastic game i am sure make sure to keep check okay i'm now joined by the one the only tom guntrip Everyone in Cardiff Met knows this man's name if they've got anything to do with basketball. And if you've just been following us on the BBC for the WPL, he's the head coach of the wheelchair ladies team. So, Tom, what do you think about this game just before we get started? Yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating encounter. Uh, real, real pivotal for the playoff clash. Uh, game earlier this season, uh, Oakland's won on the buzzer. Archers have been in a little bit good run of late. And, Oakland's always have the potential to mix it up. Uh, they've got an interesting style, um, and, and it's always it feels like every game between these teams since since they started playing against each other in the league has been a close one. It doesn't feel like there's ever been a blowout, so it should be a really exciting game. Absolutely, got to stay tuned for the whole game as Izzy Bunyan takes an early three, just bouncing off the rim. Oakland Wolves hoping to put some of that pressure on. Fantastic defense from Abby Yanka. All season long, she's been picking balls out like that. Lauren Psyche hoping to carry on from that fantastic game last week. Abby Yanka, two straight threes for the Archers, unable to go down, but showing how strong they're pushing for that three ball line. Do you think that's something that the Archers will be focusing on? Because it's been a struggle all season long, really, hasn't it? Yeah, they're not a particularly hot shooting team most of the time. They tend to try and focus their player inside a little bit more and, 
uh, mid-range shots. They've got such mid-range masters like Shannon Hatch um, and Lawrence Psyche. But uh, Oakland's play a, a lot of zone, and also the Archers only just want to up their three-point volume just a little bit. They're not going to turn into, you know, a 40, 43 as a game team, but they want to up it just a little bit to open things up for players like Mara Marchesossi. Absolutely, Cassidy Gold with that first basket to break the deadlock. Captain for the Wolves. And the Archers are unsuccessful again. But here is Cassidy Gould. Going in strong to the line and a foul called by the referee. She'll hit the line for two shots. Cassidy Gould, the Australian, part of that three trio of Australian internationals, Georgia Smith and Grace George. Do you think that that works, Tom, getting three people who might have a connection outside of the club together in one club? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm sure I read that they've uh, two of them have had experience playing against each other or, or with each other. Sorry, maybe on the same team, um, or potentially a, a junior team. Um, but you know, having having also that sort of natural cultural connection will help them integrate with the team um, mm. and and two of them have British passports as well. Uh, doesn't always count towards the overseas quota. George Smith's got experience in this league. Uh, like it's a really nice uh, it's a really nice way to to build a, build that sort of overseas combo. Uh, that, that every team needs to be successful. Absolutely, recruitment such an important part of the development of basketball in Britain. Here is Mara Marchesotti down low. And it's the first bucket for the Archers. Four to two. Here is Cassidy Gould. Look at all that experience. Picking out the perfect driving lane. Four years at Davidson, of course. Not going to make any comparisons to Steph Curry, but Steph Curry. That's a lovely move by March Azotti. They, they've been looking to use her size a little bit more recently. Mm. Um, she has got really nice shoulder work and uh, to tie in with, the, with her finishing and her footwork. So that was a really nice shoulder fake there to get into her preferred middle. It will be really good to see her get off to a good start today. It wasn't too successful for her last time against the Mystics. Izzy Bunyan here knocks it down from the mid-range. Uh, Izzy's, Izzy's relentless. Um, she's kind of kind of got no conscience because she's so so chilled and so composed all the time, and nothing really flusters her. And you know, in a situation like that, with with a big coming out and contesting you, it uh, really didn't matter to her. Cassidy Gould playmaking once again, but Oakland unable to take advantage. Lauren Psyche on the fast break stops on a dime. Balls recovered by Izzy Bunyan, unable to make it count. The handles on display here. Cassidy Gould and another launch from three for the Wolves. Shannon Hatch picks it out of the air. And it's beautiful play forward. Abby Younger, Shannon Hatch. Well, Tom, that is perfect Archers basketball. Oh, Shannon Hatch putting on the afterburners there. I had not seen her uh, I'd not seen her with that speed before. But you know, she 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 earned those points properly. You know, they're looking to get out in transition. We can see it here again. If you run fast, your teammates will find you, and, and running fast is probably the easiest way to go score. Absolutely, got to get those easy points in transition if you're going to get higher up in the standings. The ball recovered here by Abby Yanker. Pushed forward up the court. Lauren Psyche not quite able to do that. And Sam and Hatch also on the second attempt. Oakland here. George George calling uh, Lauren Psyche for, for a flop there. Uh, looked like there was a little bit of contact. Uh, but it, I think you know, two bounces off the rim there. And, and it shows that if you're not perfect on your finishes, um, you might be in a, a little bit of bother. Absolutely. Well, we're going to get some substitutions in here for Oakland. We've got Grace George taking a seat. Rare to see her taking one so early. She's so, so essential. Georgia Smith coming on. A flurry of points last time these two faced each other in November. 32. Fantastic. Here are the archers. Shannon Hatch looking for that mid-range shot again. Missed absolutely everything there. Oakland pushing it fast again. From deep again, but it's unsuccessful again. Lauren Psyche hoping to reset the play here. Finding Izzy Bunyan in that right corner. Izzy's developed her playmaking ability so much this season. We saw that last time out. A plethora of assists. Fantastic move, trying to create some space, and she draws contact, Tom. She's a professional, isn't she? Oh, that footwork is, is lovely. Um, the, the up fake to the middle, and then the classic step through 
and pivot. Um, a lot of people might think it's a, a travel when you lift that pivot foot. It's only if you put it back down on the floor. So that's a, a classic example there of, uh, of sort of old school footwork and, and something that um, some some kids don't always have. You know, they like the euros, they like they like the fancy stuff, but there's sometimes there's nothing wrong with just getting on the deck and doing a, a classic step through. Absolutely, a benefit of having John Bunyan for a father, I'm sure. The first one is down from Izzy Bunyan. Wants to increase her free throw percentage this year. Still in the 60s. I'm sure she'll be increasing it as the years go on. And it's two for two. And then on these on these rims, these are not, not the, the regular rims. Uh, viewers might notice that playing on the special show court at Archers Arena today, because they're nailed into the ground and they're not used as often. Um, and, and they've not got lots of like guys dunking on them or, or anything like that. They're, they're quite solid and they're, and they're a little bit older, so they're not the sort of thinner, metally plastic type thing that we've got before. So free throws, you've basically got to swish it or it's, it's not heading in. The mid-range pull-up and successful for the Wolves, but Shannon Hatch makes no such mistake. Here is Georgia Smith pushing it forward. Open at the three. And out of the rim, it's a strong rebound. Trying to turn around and force it, but Mara Marchesotti so dominant in the paint. Defensively, she's so crucial to everything the artists do, right, Tom? Yeah, she's got such big size and, and she's strong as well. Like she's got a lot of strength to, to go with it. She's got um, a, a lot of upper body strength as well. So, you know, it's not easy to move her around. Uh, and she's going to have that size advantage today. So if, if the archers can take advantage of that and if she can take advantage of that size, it cause a real problem for Oakland. A hustle play there from Shannon Hatch. But they can't take advantage of it. The Wolves can take advantage of all that space beyond the three-point line. If they start hitting these, it's going to be a rough one for the Met. Yeah, and that's a uh, junior Welsh international, Dozy Porter, knocking down the shot. I uh, watched her play really well here last year in the in the Four Nations, and, and Beth Sarson, the new signing slash old old player, <laughs> uh, creating there. Uh, so that's so a nice combo play from from the two combo guards. Here is Georgia Smith. Fantastic footwork to create some space, and it's just off again, and not quite hitting yet for these Wolves. Lauren Psyche resetting, just taking a second to calculate her next move. She's trapped here by the Oakland defenders. Shannon Hatch finding Mara Machizotti. Yeah, really nice defensive play from Daisy Porter. They grabbed the ball and then just was in, like, took one too many steps. Um, but we can see there that Oakland's uh, looking to hedge out on the pick and roll against Lauren Psyche. So they saw the damage she did against Manchester Mystics. Absolutely. And they've decided that they would rather anyone else have the ball than Lauren Psyche. So by sending two to the ball, they're looking to get it released and dare the rest of the archers to shoot. So there, you know, there'll be four v three advantages for the archers elsewhere. So it's up to them to take advantage of that. It's Lara Habling and Shanahan fitting in for the archers as Mara Machizotti and Izzy Bunyan take a seat. Fantastic play from the inbound. Abby Yunker there. Here is George for the Wolves, trying to make some space. And it's just out off the rim there. Lauren Psyche looking to push the pace. And it's in off the bank. What were you saying about having to switch it there? <laughs> well, if you just avoid the rim altogether, either, either way, you'll, uh, you'll be happy. But, you know, a great job. The little drag screen in transition there, just to, just to free her up. The, the defender was partially worried about the threat of Shannon Hatch and her. 18 and a half points a game yeah and that opens it right up for for Lauren Psyche so wait you know e even if you don't get to score in direct transition still pushing the floor getting from A to B as quick as you can uh, and looking to score after eight or nine seconds but with pace is still a fantastic option for the archers well we're in our first time out here called by the Wolves I'd say it's reasonable for the coach to have taken a little break there try and put some water on the fire that these archers have come out with 14 to 7, 3 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in this first quarter. This is a perfect start for the Archers, right, Tom? Oh, yeah, they'll be very happy with this. Um, I, th I think probably more than anything, it's going to be the defence. They've held them to seven points in, in just under seven minutes. You know, they're, 
Coach Steph Collins is smart enough to know that you know transition points will, will generally come and go across the course of the game because it depends on what's happening at the other end. But for them to hold them to just seven defensively, um, you know, they, they, the, the Wolves have missed shots that they, they might normally make. It, it's dangerous to leave shooters open as often as they have. Absolutely. But at the same time, if that's the strategy and that's the result, then you've got to be happy with that. We'll, we'll have to see if that is the strategy. But fundamentally, it is a results business and, and seven points in, in nearly seven minutes doesn't lie. That's fantastic defense overall. Absolutely a great start but of course a poor start for the Wolves shooting only 2 for 13 since we have tipped off here Shannon Hatch really displaying that hustle 7 rebounds already that's phenomenal here is Georgia Smith dangerous as always that quick first step the referee blows the whistle there Shannon Hatch thought that was clean no, I think uh, I think Shannon was clean but but Abby Young has called for the block on that one. I think she just turned her body a little bit too oh, much. I see. It's one of those plays as a, as a player, and I had a few in my game just now where two players are involved, a foul's called, and one of them's like, it wasn't me, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's like, you're right, it wasn't you, don't worry about it, it was, it was someone else. <laughs> it was your teammate. Well, the Wolves not shooting great from the field, but they're doing pretty good from the line so far. That makes it four for four for the Wolves. Archer's pushing up here with Lauren Psyche as per usual. Shannon Hatch with a screen trying to create some space for Psyche. Manages it. Lauren Psyche with a great brace through. And the right-handed layup is strong. Yeah, the, so the, the evolution of the of the rules of basketball of time, you know, the yeah, hand gets caught in there and Kizzy Spence has to just let that one go. So she needs the help to, to come. It's quite difficult to be an on-ball defender these days at, uh, and be physical. But, uh, yeah, really great play from Lawrence Psyche, both ends there. Mm, fantastic contest on the shot here. Finding Shanahan turns down the open Abiyanka for the clear driving lane. Archer's ignoring the threes more than two. They'd rather the higher efficiency. Here is Georgia Smith involved as always. They work the ball inside, trying to create something off the pick here. Too strong on the layup again, Tom. Yeah, the, the archer's also looking there. It looks like they want to, to hedge or, or, or trap or, or this, whatever type of minor scheme that is, to, uh, to force the ball out of the ball handler's hands in the pick and roll. So looks like both teams are, are, are broadly doing a similar thing. See, they've just switched there, but that's quite like to like it. In general, looks like both teams are going to try and take the ball out of the point guard's hands. Well, interesting there, but a fantastic hustle play from Shannon Hatch. A phenomenal 30 to 40 seconds there two offensive rebounds and then trying the fadeaway shot draws the foul unable to knock it down couple more changes here Izzy Bunyan returning Abby Yunker taking a seat it looks like Shannon Hatch will also take a breather in a second Steph Collins sticking with a sort of a seven-ish player rotation um, we, we might see a little bit of Levi Warren for a spell in the in the at some point in the second period and um, you know Molly James had a couple of good games but struggled with injury this year so Steph Collins had to go with quite a small rotation yeah. um, and having to sort of try and fire people in and out to, to keep them fresh whereas Oakland's looks like they're running uh, at least nine deep today if not if not maybe more we've got a very heavy roster interesting you say that about Molly James a lot of people surprised not to see her so much in the Manchester game after being on an absolute scorcher the week before We'll see if they miss her this afternoon. Lara Havling driving inside, but not quite able to finish it off. The defense from the Archers starting right up in the offensive court. The energy to keep this up is phenomenal, Tom. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really tough style of defense to, to put a commit to. They were, we spoke about it last week, James Dorr uh, offering his expertise on this, uh, tagging up. So on the offensive rebound, they look to get right to their defender already. Um, sorry, to their defensive matchup and, and really trying to apply that pressure sort of full court and, and try to tire teams out. It's obviously physically demanding yourself, but if you can execute that sort of style of play, it means that by the time you get into your offence, you're halfway through a shot clock and, and it really limits the options for the, for the opposition. Absolutely. Well, Grace George creating an opportunity for herself here. Six foot three for the 22-year-old Australian. What does that extra height enable you to be able to do as a wing in this game? 
Yeah, when you've when you've got all the tools and you have the the size as well. Uh, for me, you know, your shot can your your shot is literally released from high. It makes it harder to contest. You're less worried. Um, you know, your ability to to rebound uh, be easier. You obviously don't have to go as hard at stuff. Uh, finishing at the rim, you can just get that little bit closer. Um, you know, there, there are disadvantages like your dribble will come a bit higher. So you 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 know, if you're playing as a, in the pick and roll, you may have to to change and, and adapt to your body size, but. Um, you know, everyone wants big wings. It's kind of, it's kind of a fantastic multi-tool to have. And when someone can do a little bit of everything, it gives them such flexibility on the offensive end to run different lineups and different sets. Well, she's got all the tools and all the height you could ask for in this league. Oakland winning the offensive rebound and trying to generate that open shot from the outside once again, but still unable to knock it down. And still they try. That's one for eight from the three-point line for the Open Wolves. And that's a, that's a three-point technique that looks like it could fall at any second. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a dangerous shooter. Shanahan open in the corner, turns down the three. Lara Havling misses everything. Yeah, all resulting from the, from the full court pressure applied there. A um, couple of guards out there and, and Laura Habling ending up having to try and bring the ball up and, and delayed delayed the offense. So the archers need to just get a little bit of clarity if, they, if the pressure's going to keep coming. How are they how are they going to progress the ball up the floor? The deep three from the Wolves to end the quarter, unable to secure it. Grace George with the confident attempt, but the archers take the lead at the end of the first. It's 19 to 10. I don't think Steph Collins could have asked for much better than that going into this one, being able to give a good break to Shannon Hatch as well. You don't often see two, three, four minutes of the first quarter passing by with her on the bench. No, and uh, it look, looks like she may uh, may be coming back in, but, you know, she had a great start, five points, nine rebounds. Unbelievable. Um, you know, when Shannon's clearing up rebounds, it adds a different dimension to their game once again. Uh, but, you know, I think there's such a long time left in the game. We had a similarly poor start in our, in our wheelchair WPL game. Earlier, we were down 20 to 8, and, and there's still plenty of time left in the game. That's sort of the message that they're likely to reinforce here uh, for the Wolves alongside the standard X's nose is that nine points in 30 minutes is, is, quite, is quite easily doable. So there's no real need to panic right now. You've got so much time left in the game. You know, you've just got to scrape a little bit more, a little bit more, have a couple of bounces go your way, and, and this could be a tied game within, within four or five minutes, no, no problems. And equally for the archers, it's not, no time to rest on your laurels here. Just because you've had a good first quarter does not mean it shall be easy going for the next three. No, and so far there's no complaints about the, uh, the officiating, really. Um, you know, as we have one of the referees come over and inspect <laughs> the inspect the kit um, on, on the officials it's always nice when you can chat to officials and they have a little bit of personality um, it just you know when you get along with an official it, it does make it a lot easier than saying that they you know they have their bias or anything it's more that they can explain their calls well um, and also a, a referees want to enjoy the game as well so if they're, if they're having fun then that probably makes them more likely to, to do a good job Gould and George connecting there but unable to connect on the shot Lauren Psyche found inside by Mara Machizotti takes the shot into contact and that'll be free throws. It looks like it's been called on the floor. No. Um, yeah, well, once again, they're, they're not quite happy with, with Lauren Psyche there, um, the, the Oakland Wolves, but just want to draw attention to that pass from Mara Machizotti to, to find Lauren Psyche on the backdoor cut. They were trying to apply pressure to Lauren Psyche. She cuts hard back door um, and that's a really nice bullet pass on the money for Mara Machizotti to open up the rest of the offense. Shannon Hatch trying to get open, unable to do so. Have to recycle. Here's Shanahan finding Psyche. The pull up from the mid range, a tough shot. Unable to make it go. Here is George driving strong as ever. Kicking back out as it doesn't work. Good pass. Unable to hit the three. Oakland, if they start hitting these, it could be scary for the archers, but right now they're happy to let them shoot. Yeah, they're, li they're living slightly on, on thin ice there as Shanahan nails the pull-up. And they've got, they've got to decide exactly what type of threes they're willing to give up and to who. You know, maybe that's a player that they're, they're happy to let shoot, but someone like Beth Sarson they don't want to let shoot. But, you know, the, as we say right there, the, the Wolves are getting a lot of three-point opportunities. And if those start to drop, we can change the game very quickly. 
Lauren Psyche taken out as she tried to get that rebound, but Izzy Bunyan happy to bring the ball up the court herself. Here is Psyche. Walks straight into that one. A deep mid-range pull-up for Lauren Silky Psyche as the Archers extend the lead to 13. Cassidy Gould with a strong drive straight into the chest of the defence, but unable to pull it off. And the defence stood tall, stood strong, didn't give away any silly fouls. Good discipline from the Archers. Yeah, really good, really good work in the in the cylinder there. Uh, Izzy Bunyan making sure that she didn't she didn't collapse the body and give the referees a chance. Lauren Psyche feeling it today. A second step up, pull up from the mid range. A fantastic game so far for these Archers. 25 to 10 here, eight minutes to go. Wide open. The Wolves unable to take advantage of so much space there. Yeah, it's two very different contrasting styles of basketball. Uh, the Oakland Wolves have taken more threes than twos so far, and, and the Archers have only taken three threes, but they've shot uh, with, oh, nearly 25, <laughs> and it might be 25 times inside the arc. Uh, two very different styles of basketball, and it's interesting to see sort of the, the philosophies at play here. Interesting to see two coaches head to head with such opposing styles. Couple of changes here. Levi Warren coming in for the Archers. And on that, I know that uh, Tor Freeman is, uh, is new to the new to the role, and he's he's won awards for his work coaching juniors. And and if you if you're winning national awards for your work coaching juniors, it says to me you have something, some some good knowledge to bring. And so it's a team a little bit in transition this year, and they had their their international stars arrive late. So it's not exactly been the easiest easiest season for them so far um, and, and anyone stepping straight up into a WL job will need some time to implant their thoughts and, and get used to get used to the league and, and all of the nuances that come with it well just before then a fantastic drive by Izzy Bunyan body control on display as she stepped through the defense and then it was fantastic the steal from Abby Yanka. unfortunately the archers couldn't capitalize but here they go again with Izzy Bunyan with a deep three. That's how you do it, Oakland. Forces the timeout for the Wolves. Well, these archers are on fire. Huff and they puff and they blow the Wolves away. 30-10, 20-point lead. A fantastic second quarter so far. Zero points for the Wolves. What Steph Conn is going to be telling to these archers in this timeout? Well done, good work so far. <laughs> uh, sometimes there's some, uh, sometimes there's nothing wrong with just saying, "Yeah, guys, this is their timeout. I don't really want to change anything." Uh, they've they've had such such like nice ball movement so far. Oakland just feels like there's a bit of cling film on the basket down there or something. They just can't get it to to drop. You know, they've missed good looks and, and perhaps Torfrim will be reinforced. And like guys, it will start to drop eventually. Maybe he'll look to see if he can get a few more shots at the rim and, and change it, tweak a couple of things to get some confidence going. But but Steph Collins, th there isn't too much you want to be changing there. Uh, they've, they've had such a good start so far that you kind of want to say, right, they want to end this run and actually we're going to put our foot down and we're really going to go for it again and let's, let's just try and kill this game off right here, right now. Well, it's an enormous lead for the Met as we get going here in this second quarter once more. One of 11 from two points for the Wolves. One of 13 from three. It's not good reading if you're an Oakland's fan. No, I think uh, I think you know, if you look at objectively look at the shots without the result, a lot of those will go. Yeah, you have to take that every time. Absolutely, um, and, and they'll catch up to their percentages soon. I'm sure. Sometimes you just have a bad day, but so if you're the Archers, you've got to assume that they'll start to hit them and, and make sure you're doing the processes the right way. Wolves out of the timeout. Take a standstill three. Looks like the coach wasn't planning on changing anything there. Either that or the Archers enabled to turn down his offensive set. Shannon Hatch on this right-hand side decides that she wants in on the three-ball game. Unable to knock that one down. The Wolves push forward. Here is George again driving. So strong. And the ball won from Izzy Bunyan there, leading the WBBL in blocks a game so far this year, showing just how crucial she can be to a defense. Standing up to someone six foot three as an 18 year old, what an impressive feat that is for Izzy Bunyan. Yeah, like I say, she's, she may be young, but she's, she's not scared at all. Um, you know, she's got good size, 
Um, she'll inevitably add a little bit of muscle to that as, as she grows older. But yeah, she's she's basically fearless, is he? Well, ever so experienced for such a young age. She's been playing basketball since she was 11 years old, playing in the garden, of course, before then. As the Wolves miss once again from the corner three. Izzy bringing up the ball once again. Shannon Hatch trying to take Gould out of her path. And it leaves a wide open Abby Yunker. Missing once more. Here are the Wolves trying to find George. And Lauren Psyche with the steal. She's got help. She doesn't need it. She doesn't need it. Happy to go in for the layup. Willing to take contact. Willing to put her body on the line. Lauren Psyche. Yeah, Laura, Lauren embraces that contact. She searches for it. Um, you know, she knows that she's got that strength, even at her size, to, to finish if she gets hit. And for her, it's, uh, it's a good way, to, good way to try and generate some easy looks. If you take the defender out with the contact, then, then you should be able to finish at, finish at the rim with not much pressure. Well, that didn't work there, that offensive set for the Wolves. But that entry pass from George to Casti Gould, unbelievable. As the archers reset once more, here is Abby Yunker. Finding Levi Warren, kicking it out to Izzy. Feeling it. In off the bank, though. <laughs> not sure she called it, but we'll give her that one. No, and I think this is one of those ones where, as a coach, you just have a wry smile and you think, sometimes, does it matter what we do? Like, they're going to get to bank shots in and have the lucky drops, then what's going what's gonna to go our way? Interesting there, George once more driving straight into contact. The ability to have Izzy, Shannon Hatch defending down low like that seems to have minimized the impact of having such a tall, strong driver in George. It's, it'll be interesting to see if they can keep this up because something's got to go down for these Wolves. Shannon Hatch from the mid-range. That's what she does. Swiss cheese. Yeah, Shannon Hatch can't be left open from there. I think Lauren Psyche probably turned down a good look there. Um, Levi Warren getting the screen from Shannon Hatch to go and then set the pick and roll for Lauren Psyche and no one followed her. Lauren Psyche probably turned down a good look, but in the end it works out for the Archers. Here's Georgia Smith duking and jiving. Shannon Hatch got her hands on that one. Oh, and the defense. Ah, didn't get their hands on that one. Referee say Wolves ball. Yeah, Shannon just looking to stop and catch and then drop back to Lauren Psyche, who has the momentum to go. Um, but best start, some of the Wolves knew what Shannon Hatch was trying to do there and managed to play the lane. I think Shannon Hatch probably should have taken that stronger to the hoop with a bit more purpose um, and really forced the defender to commit and made the pass a little bit easier for herself. Well, we just saw Lauren Psyche do that and it worked out pretty well for her. Foul called against Abby Yunker on George Smith. Hasn't had the impact she would want to have so far but it's clear to see how dangerous she is that quick handle and fast moving feet Shannon Hatch unable to secure the rebound and the Wolves get their first basket in this entire second quarter yeah I think that's a uh, 3 of 31 now from the field cool. um, some, like, sometimes if you're cold you are, you are cold but you know, maybe that's the spark that helps get them going a little bit Lauren Psyche driving straight at contact. The Wolves slightly angry, to say the least, at the referee's whistle. A yeah, good job there just to, to huddle together, take away the, the initial impact of the anger at the, at the call and, and get together and find a productive, productive way there. The card down their teammate uh, made sure that it was okay for the next play. Um, I think that's really smart play from the Wolves there. And it, it, you need that when things aren't going your way. You have to have some leadership out mm. on court. Um, not everything can always come from the sideline as much as coaches would like it to be. Um, so that, that, that's really smart there. Down to the experience of the Australian international Georgia Smith. Look at this lineup here for the Archers. We've got Psyche, Hatch, Izzy, Lara Havling and Mara Machizossi. I don't think we could get taller. No, I don't think I've seen this lineup before, but it moves Shannon Hatch to the three spot. Um, where, when Lara Habling and Mara Machazotti will play the four and the five. You know, she, Shannon Hatch's advantages normally come from playing as the four and being able to move faster than her opponent. Now she's got the size advantage. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Fantastic defensive rebound from Lara Habling there. 
And that'll be a foul. Here's Lauren Saiki. Bringing up the ball once more. This larger lineup will leave the ball in her hands a little as the Wolves look to break from the misplaced pass and they capitalize. The fantastic time out there from Steph Collins, just ensuring that these Wolves don't get too carried away. They've hit two buckets in quick succession, maybe on their way back in this game. Now, when you've got two timeouts to use like that, um, you might, might as well ping one as early as, as needs be. Um, if you have to be a little bit more selective, you don't want to kind of go, oh, do I need it later? That's exactly the sort of situation where you go, no, those two possessions weren't good enough. Now, normally, you try and call a timeout for, for bigger periods of play, but okay, in situations like this, you go, no, you, you know, that, that was careless there from Lawrence Ike and Easy Bunyan. That's one of the ones where you go, no, just because you're winning doesn't mean it's done, but look after the ball, still got to do things properly, still got to get back in transition, still got to play defence properly. You know, there's no, there's no off switch up. You know, these, uh, it's happened in previous games. This, this deficit is absolutely not insurmountable. Um, you've got to make sure that you, you finish periods of play strong. Uh, anything can happen here at King Coy's campus. We've seen bigger leads than this dissipate before. Just a reiteration of fundamentals and the standards that Coach Collins demands from these WBBL ladies. Time is three minutes and one second left before the half. Here's Izzy Bunyan set to instigate play. Shannon Hatch calling directions. Orchestrating here. Looking to get Psyche free. They find Hatch on the baseline drive. And just off the rim there. Maybe there's an example of those show coat rims you were talking about, Tom. Yeah, she she thinks she might have been clipped, but you've got to you've got to go hard, you've got to take it strong, you've got to make sure that regardless of the contact, you're doing what you can to to get right to the rim. Uh, she's just having a discussion with the official now. Uh, but yeah, they, they're not very forgiving. Lauren Psyche on this left-hand side, moving with Lara Habling, so mobile at that position, and draws contact. Yeah, really nice set. They, they aren't just like to run that a lot, where they set a, a back screen for someone to go towards the hoop and then look to reverse the ball into a pick and roll. And we can see here on the screen that Izzy Bunyan gets the back screen from Lara Habling. They look to deny that reversal pass. Really good backdoor cut. And uh, it's, it's a tough place to help from if you're you know, trying to guard the ball and then rotate across. So it's a really good read by Lara Habling there and, and deserved free throws. What a fantastic asset to have, this rotation of intelligent and strong bigs within the Archers lineup. So much options, so much opportunity for tactical advantage. Shannon Hatch with a hustle play, not quite able to keep it in. But it will be Archer's ball. Yeah, I think it was a, a tip just landed on the line before she got there. Uh, looked like she'd kept herself in. So, um, And then here come the Archers going back to a, a slightly more regular size lineup. We're, we're so used to seeing any two of the three of Hatch, Habling and Marchesotti that you're right, when you see all three of them, it throws you off slightly. Absolutely. Here is Izzy Bunyan looking to use that footwork once again. Lauren Psyche off the curl. What an enormous shot, but no basket called. Look at the finger roll from Lauren Saiki. She amazes me every time I'm here to watch her. Yeah, I'm about to be a very unpopular man in Art Arena, but I, I think that's the right call. I think she was fouled Ooh. before she was in the act of shooting. But that's such an incredible finish. And I really... Uh, Appreciate the air. She's she's still dribbling. I think when the when the foul contact happens. I think. Uh, right. Thank thank you for the replay. I mean, even in slow motion, I'm still I'm still 50 50 on that, and I don't don't think I'll ever be sure. <laughs> Izzy Bunyan taking the three once more. Fantastic offensive rebound from Lara Habling, finding Shanahan in space. Izzy Bunyan with a perfect entry pass, but blocked by George. That height, the forward position, able to defend the big Amara Marchesotti and it's phenomenal defense down the other side by Izzy Bunyan. The pace there from the Wolves there to get from... Uh, two great pieces of defense, but uh, Marchesotti with a nice duck in, but awesome defense. And then to go the other way and 
So I've been like Daisy Bunyan, so good at that vertical stand and block. Um, you know, really, really like it when teams are playing good defence. That's that uh, really impressive stuff. There we are. We've got another bucket for the Wolves. It is 37 to 16. Izzy Bunyan in acres of space in that mid-range pocket. That drop defense on the pick and roll is not going to work when you have mid-range shooters like the Archers do. No, and when you can shoot mid-range, it, it is the perfect tool. Um, you know, if you've got a point guard who can come off and, and shoot that ball like a Lawrence Psyche or like an Izzy Bunyan, uh, then that's the, that's the perfect weapon to have. Offensive foul called against the Wolves here. Archer's getting a chance to capitalise further. Yeah, I'm not an expert lip reader, but I'm sure I, I saw the word flop come out of my mouth, but I think I agree there on that on that call that the arm was extended. And any time you extend the arm, it's a risky game. Um, you know, you, you, may, you may think that the contact was exaggerated, but um, it's one of those things that when you're refereeing, you look out for. If you see an arm get pushed out, it almost kind of doesn't matter what happens on the other side. It's one of those ones that that's easy to easy to go for. Forcing the referee to make a decision. Izzy Bunyan going over and back. Trying to be clever with the ball, hoping it would go out to be an archer's reset. But here we are with the Wolves bringing it up. Casty Gould trying to get free here. Calling directions. On this left-hand side, will they go inside here? They will. Oh, that is nice, Dav. Incredible hands down low from Jaquila Say. Yeah, really nice, really nice baseline cut there. Find the pass, high-low pass. That's, that's really good basketball, that. Speaking of good passes, Lauren Psyche finding Lara Habling in space. Unable to take advantage. And Cassidy Gould showing off the skills on the fast break. Showing off the vision on the fast break. And the rebound. But it looks like the Archers have regained the ball here. And it'll all be for nothing. Well, the ball's staying with the Wolves. Foul on the floor. Lara Habling with the, with the good hustle. And, uh, and then I think two pairs of hands on it. I think uh, e even in a game where you're up by, by loads, it's, you know, I think, across a 40-minute game, regardless of whether you're up or down, basics like hustling on the deck for the ball uh, shows the signs of you know a good team sort of culture and environment like you've always got to put your body on the line for the benefit of the team if needs be I'll say putting the ball on the floor I'm going to work on Mara Marchesotti as the bench erupts she will head to the free throw line they have been perfect so far the Wolves from the line we'll see if they can keep that up look at this power play from Ose Tom walk us through it yeah, so just uh, using that right foot as the pivot, and then she just backs the shoulder down. It, a little bit rare to see uh, to see someone post up facing the baseline. You normally post up facing the middle of the floor so you can see the help coming. But it looks like she wanted to post up that way so she could turn around into into that jumper. Uh, reasonable defense, Mara Marchesotti there. There was Lara Hablings. Well, she came across on the help and brought her hands down. But when someone's got the, the power that Ozzy has, it's a really tough, really tough guard, even for strong players. You'd, have, you'd probably have to get a lot lower use an arm bar and, and, and post defense is always tricky uh, it's not something that's really sort of taught to referees so knowing how what you can get away with in the post and what you can't can be quite difficult you saw the interesting free throw technique from Asai there taking a page out of Jeremy Shohan's book in the NBA unable to make it count and the Wolves will get us going once again cast the Gould with the inbound taking it straight back that speed off the first step she's gonna get the foul on the three a clear hand coming across there archers heading to the bench as if the half is over yeah not not the not the best foul from izzy bunyan there probably one of those ones where you can contest it she looks like she's off bounce comes across yep yeah, absolutely clear foul and then they've, they've got to add a little bit of time onto the the clock in these situations they tend to add one second so even if you're fouled at the buzzer sometimes you actually gain a second um so uh that's why there's there's a, a little bit of time added because you can't you can't not have any time left in this situation interesting well the archers choose to take a time out coach collins possibly unhappy with that foul from izzy bunyan similarly to your point tom 
Could she have maybe challenged that on the ground? Uh, I think may, maybe. Uh, it's tough. She, she went for the ball rather than trying to get across and, mm. and make it awkward. Um, you know, so, sometimes you like the aggression, sometimes you, you don't. Um, I think this timeout might be more to, to slightly ice the shooter, put them off a little bit and cause a little bit of disruption there. Um, and then it looks like she's trying to draw something up. So assuming that they make the final free throw, she's looking at some form of massive pass down court and seeing what, seeing what you can get. You know, a, a second is enough time to catch, fake and shoot. Yeah, uh, probably not enough time to take a take a sidestep dribble or anything, but it'd be interesting to see what they get. I, I imagine that they'll end up with some form of he from about their own free throw line because those full court plays feels like no matter how well you draw them up, it just never seems to quite go according <laughs> to plan. The ball bounces miles away or or something something crazy happens. Well, that's why they're called moments of magic when they do. Here is Gould at the free throw line. Knocks down the first. She's got three of these, remember? Makes it a 20-point game. Well, a lucky bounce off the back rim there. That won't happen again, even if she tried. And the third is good. Here we go, let's see what happens. Habling with the heave. Oh, I like that. Wow. Okay, so I, I believe that it, it wasn't one second, but they, they had to put something on the clock. <laughs> I think it may have been a point one or uh, maybe a point three there uh, yeah. based on the based on the referee's decision there we uh, we can't see the we'll score well we can't hear the, the the referee's decision there so I think that's why they blew it off before Izzy had a chance to shoot there well there was no time for the pass but there was time to get it up the court these moments of magic do happen every now and then we'll make sure to go just as nuts as you when it does here at Archers Arena Coming in at half time, 39 for the Cardiff Met Archers and 21 for the Oakland Wolves. We can see some youth community work going on here. Always something happening here on King Coid. Trying to keep everyone involved. Trying to grow the game from a young age. As we see Beth Jones hit in the head with the ball there. Bit of a local hero here, of course. And at half time of the WPL game, uh, it was great to have so many kids out playing wheelchair basketball. Um, one of the beauties of, of basketball as a sport in general is that there is a version for everyone to play in, and that in wheelchair basketball, um, you can play if you're disabled or if you're if you're not disabled. And, and you know we've got players in the university team here, and, and it's who, who play just because their mates play. Uh, Jade Atkin, the main reason she started playing wheelchair basketball was so that she could play on the same team as a, a sister Adele and their, their disabilities developed at different times so um, it's such an inclusive sport that it was fantastic to have so many kids able-bodied and, and disabled out on court and then great to see a local primary school or a local young girls getting to play and on the same court as their heroes um, it, it's awesome to see. Do you think we'll see an uptick now that the WPL is getting so much coverage that um, maybe we'll see more kids getting out there and giving basketball a go? Yeah, I think we've seen, we've already seen in just the year and a year and a bit, maybe year and year and five months that we've been running the junior program at Cardiff Met. Our numbers have increased by about 500%. Or, wow! Or something insane. The Inspire Generation program run by British World Jet Basketball, um, and as, you know, for especially for smaller clubs who don't already have established basketball sections, we're quite fortunate here that the, the Cardiff Celts and the Cardiff Archers have been established for such a long time. But um, for other clubs, it's a great way to help get funding required for chairs. Wheelchairs are not cheap. Absolutely. Um, day chairs and sports chairs can run into thousands and thousands of pounds but the support from that helped us start a junior program again um, I've been involved in, in running that since it began and it's so great to see so many kids and I can still see some of them here in the arena uh, my, my WPL players come and help out we're already seeing an uptick in that uh, and, and I, I think since the WPL started as well if you just think about the the community outreach programs, let alone the TV work, the fact that Coach Steph Collins and Abby Yunker, I know they go into schools. I imagine the same thing happens at Oakland, I can't, I can't necessarily comment, but they, they, I know that they've got a thriving junior section and lots of girls playing basketball. Of course. Uh, but just having the opportunity for these role models to go into schools and, and host events here, um, the, the Her World, Her Rules stuff, uh, 3x3 basketball helping out with that, um, I, I think especially in Wales, that participation, it, it continues to, to grow slowly. It's still a, a rugby nation at heart, but 
Um, there's there's nothing like being able to see your role models in action, and we're so fortunate at Archers that um, a lot of the WBBL players coach junior teams. Shannon Hatch and Lauren Psyche coach the under-18 women's team. So for them to be in the crowd or be on court and, and see their coaches doing it at the highest level, um, same for the girls who watch Mara Marchazotti or Abby Yunker. Uh, they coach the under-14 and under-16 girls, and, and for those girls to be out there on court now playing after having watched the, the play, uh, having watched their coaches play uh, and, and their heroes play, it, it must be so cool for these youngsters. And it's great to see from an overall sort of club perspective um, how beneficial that can be. Absolutely, it seems like such a an organic development pathway. It seems to really be ingrained here at King Coyd. It's been so interesting for me, obviously, having come here in September to be able to just witness it, having already been worked on and growing and growing and growing for years. It's fantastic. I'm blown away every single weekend at the contribution of so many people involved with the Archers basketball pro program across all sectors, not just the men playing in the men's team and the women playing in the women's team, but everyone playing a part across the entire program. It's phenomenal to see. Yeah, we, we really pride ourselves here on our Archer family. I think a lot of places say that it's a family and it can sometimes be crass, but, but for us, it, it's genuine here. I mean, you, you can see in the, on the background here, there's so many different people here from so many different programs who are coming from either across Wales or, or from, from further afield to, to come watch basketball in, in various guises. For us to be able to put on this triple header event with the, with the support of everyone um, involved, to, to be able to have WPL played in, in such a fantastic venue in front of the cameras for WBL to, to be doing their thing and, and have so many supporters and then for the for the men to be involved as well and we can't forget that the, the National League men first team of, of one division three this year will be looking to head into the playoffs there's so much to shout about here um, and everyone goes to watch everyone else um, I can see in the corner the, the men's team who have been here watching WBL and, and always like to make a lot of noise and when they go watch Division 1 women they like to yeah. go and make a lot of noise the, the WBL girls have been fantastic with my WPL wheelchair team mm. they're always coming and supporting I can still see some of my WPL and wheelchair players here supporting that there's so much good stuff that happens like you say across people people supporting other programs other teams working with juniors there's, it's not just the men play for the men, the women play for the women. Someone else comes in to coach the kids. It's all linked together and, and it's fantastic. The, the wheelchair team also with the Big Bucks Wednesday coming up as well. That'll be a fantastic event. Yeah, we want to go one step further than we did last year. Of Dab. course. Uh, of course. Last year, Nottingham deserved winners. They played fantastically well. They, um, you know, they, they really did deserve to win, but it was awesome to be a part of the first ever wheelchair basketball Bucks National Championship final. Um, it was a real privilege and, and I think this year the event's going to be even bigger and better and you know Worcester are such a good team they've, they've undefeated all season they've got great players um, you know that the, the one of the one of the highlights for me will be uh, Simon Fisher is, is studying at, at Worcester University as well as being my opposite number uh, in the WPL so for ah. me to coach against him as a player will will just be a lot of fun but they've got such talent that it's going to be such a great game of basketball and hopefully a great advert for wheelchair basketball um, in general. That should be the goal for all of this, to be growing basketball in all forms across the nation. We're seeing an uptick in fan bases, in streams, in views, the BBC taking part. It's fantastic to see basketball on the rise here in the UK. Not long left now in this half-time break. We're just seeing the archers return from the dressing room. 18 points the deficit here. You would assume they'd be able to hold on to that, but you wouldn't want to count your chickens yet. How do they make sure that they keep it up, Tom? It's about not being not being complacent. Um, going back to what worked in that early second quarter uh, spell, just making sure they stay focused. Um, I think they're, they're a focused group in, in general, but... You know, there's always going to be runs in basketball and it's about acknowledging that happens, but making sure you come out and I always like to talk about throwing the first punch. You know, think about the great boxers. Um, you know, a lot of them like to like hold back, hold back. And then when the punches actually start to fly, you want to throw the first one. You kind of want to set the tone. You want to hit that haymaker early. 
and if you're going to be aggressive. And I think this is what they need to come out and do. They need to come out and throw that haymaker to start the period. So whatever, you know, if they go to the pressure that they did against Manchester, um, if, they, if they change up, whatever they do, it, it probably needs to be aggressive to really put Oakland on the back foot again. I think they, they were able to, in, inside in that early period, they were able to drive inside. They kind of struggled a little bit. Oakland's made some adjustments. So it's about going back to being aggressive uh, and trying to dictate what happens at both ends rather than necessarily reacting. And you've, got, you've got to go out and say, no, we're going to let you have this and we're going to go do this and, and see if you can get it done. Well, I always love a boxing analogy. And this contest is not far from returning. Taking a look at the stats here, Izzy Bunyan leading the game in points 13 for the archers Lawrence Psyche with 11 Shannon Hatch with only seven but you'd assume that'll increase throughout this second half she's averaging 18 a game has been all season long fluctuating between 18 and 19 so you'd expect her to really try and take over perhaps in these next couple of rounds here Izzy Bunyan showing out, of course, 13 points, but also two assists. We'll be seeing if she can keep that kind of playmaking going up. We saw that she had an awful lot of responsibility with the ball in her hands, with playmaking, bringing the ball up consistently. It can look a little odd sometimes. People often mistake her for a forward, but she'd been a guard for so long that she's still oh so confident. That's why she was oh so coveted in the US of A. Everyone here warming up. Oakland trying to sink some threes. Maybe try and break the curse during this part time break. Cardiff Met looking very relaxed. Free throws, talking, laughing, handshakes. Good to see a happy atmosphere good team chemistry but also important to remember as we said that nothing is done we like to see laughing and handshakes but not at the cost of focus well coming up next for both of these teams the Wolves face the Newcastle Eagles who have been doing fantastic so far this year both their men's and women's sides Make sure to keep up with that one. It looks to be a fantastic matchup. Whereas the Archers welcome the Caledonia Gladiators. It's the end of a three game streak at home. It'll be interesting to see Caledonia return. Fantastic couple of games so far this season between those two sides. Make sure that we get a nice big crowd down here at Archers Arena to encourage the home side on to another victory if they can get the win here and another win next weekend all of a sudden the playoffs are looking very very strong for these archers Casty Gould has been phenomenal for the Wolves in my opinion so far hasn't been sinking shots maybe as much as she'd like to be of course but her impact on the game has been undeniable. I mean, 5'10", 22 years old. Captain of these Wolves. Ended her time at Davidson as captain there also. Held her starting role for four straight years in the Division I side. Interesting to see as she progresses throughout her career where she goes. Just 22 years of age, so much experience. The sky is the limit, you must imagine. It might take all that she's got to make up the deficit in this one. Seeing the archers warm up here, starting to get a little bit more intense in their warm ups. Really interesting to see early on, we saw Levi Warren check in for the archers. Not had too many minutes so far this season, but has played a real, real impactful section there. Real minutes, she played hard. Interesting to see. Steph Collins still happy to change it up here. Outside of her usual substitutions, of course, if you've been watching these archers 
with us all season. You'll be very used to the main seven or eight players in the squad. Always trusted, always relied upon. But good to see others in the squad getting an opportunity, even in games as essential as this one. Referee calling for one minute. The archers call in their players for talks. Just one minute or so to go until we return for the second half, the deciding half in this fixture. WBBL, all the standings on a knife edge. Teams so close to one another. This game could have a real impact. I'd imagine Steph Collins is not going to change too much. But the Wolves, on the other hand, have an awful lot to improve on. Tom, do you reckon they keep shooting when they come out? Or do you reckon, think they're going to look to create inside a little more? Uh, they might look to go inside out. It, it looks like looking across at the bench that they've gone to a, a slightly smaller, potentially more shootier lineup. I know that the OC started the game and uh, it looks like Georgia Smith is going to come in and start there. So maybe they're a little bit smaller, might spread the floor, might just keep trying to shoot their way through it. If that's their identity, then you, you kind of have to, if, if you've agreed on identity, you can't just get rid of it because it's not worked for, for a half. I mean, one of 20, it feels like that can't happen again. Uh, and, and, you know, they picked up a little bit of five of 19 inside the arc. Maybe they look, need to look to get inside out a little bit more, but most of those looks were pretty good. You know, and from, from my perspective here, you, you take a lot of those looks again and again. You know, extra passes to open people that you like as shooters. Sometimes it just doesn't go for you. Maybe they need to get a little bit lower down. As uh, I can see the, the referee waving, he loves to be on camera. Uh, maybe they need to let, get a little bit closer to the basket and then kick out so that shooters can align themselves a little bit easier. But fundamentally, it feels like they've generated good looks and they just haven't quite knocked enough down for, it, for them to be right in the game right now. Yeah, well, we are seeing George, George Smith and Gould all starting the second half for the Wolves. Business is business and we are underway. Here is George. Her and Smith returning the ball to one another. And the ball goes the way of the Wolves. And Lauren Psyche caught with the hand in the cookie jar there. Just on the arm as George tried to kick out to the corner. You could see she tried to drive to suck them in and then fire it back out to the right corner. But the, the foul preventing her from doing so. George Smith trying to create space in that corner, but it's ended up with George. And the pull-up jumper is clean from the mid-range. Here's Izzy Bunyan. Using the screen from Shannon Hatch to get that switch. Lauren Psyche atop the key. Trying to dribble through traffic here. Shannon Hatch from the mid-range trying to get that back, but unable to do so. Here is Georgia Smith. Happy to take the mid-range jumper in traffic there, Tom. Um, may, maybe a kick out a better look, but she ended up with, with more space than I thought she would. So I don't, I don't think that's a, a terrible look by, by any stretch, and she's probably more likely to hit that than miss that generally. Shannon Hatch missing once again, seeming just a little off perhaps today. Only seven points so far. She's missed the first two coming out of the break. Plenty of time to make up for missed opportunities though and the Wolves unable to hit from deep yeah if you if you build a team of shooters then then this is sometimes sort of what happens like if you don't have any other options you kind of do have to just keep going with the shooters and see if you can shoot your way out of it speaking of shooting there's Lauren Psyche again taking advantage of that drop defense through the pick and roll from George if she's going to let off, Lauren Psyche's going to let fly. Here is George on the other end. A beautiful entry pass to Gould. And Izzy Bunyan secures the rebound very comfortably. Finding Mara. Lauren Psyche with a handoff. Finding Hatch. Seemed open, looking to recycle it inside. And the foul goes the Wolves' way against Mara Marchesotti. 
What do you think of that, Tom? Yeah, I think just a little bit, little bit too strong with the arms. Just rather than using the body to to lever out the way, it looked like a, a an extension of the arms. Um, a lot of bodies in the way. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite get the view. But but generally, when the when the post player has the deck like that, it, it's not because they've been levered out the way with a with a legal cylinder. Here is Georgia Smith trying to use those handles to create some space for herself. She manages it against Lauren Zaiki there. The shorter guard able to rise above with a strong lay. Yeah, the same sort of move that Lauren Saiki did earlier in the exact same place and with the, with the exact same result. Uh, Mara Machizotti unable to retain the ball there off the entry pass, but Lauren Saiki will get the archers going once more. Interesting there, George sat out just one play and then is instantly recalled to the court. I wonder what coach is thinking. Uh, it might just be a, a quick hydration break, uh, uh, a change of a uh, change of shoes, change of socks. Who, who knows? But yeah, it's, it's a rare one. A strong planted foot there on the turnaround from Abiyanka, but unable to knock it down. George was free in the corner, but Shannon Hatch had quicker hands and able to put it forward to Abiyanka, and one called. A fantastic layup, strong through the challenge, and she hits the deck. She'll hit free throws. Referees just checking in case of a head injury there. Tom, not 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 called a foul. Not called a foul there at all. No, it, I think it's just a, a pause for just to check that she was okay. Uh, oh, we, we, was we, I think either way, you do have to stop the play there. Yeah, of um, course. But it, it did look to me like she wasn't given landing space. The contact was after she'd shot the ball, but before she'd landed. So for me, that, look, that looked like a foul. Well, moving forward, Cardiff met 43, the Wolves 25, retaining that 18 point lead we had at the half. Archers having a couple of decisions going against them here need to stay strong get through this period that yeah, happens in any game of basketball but inevitably one or both teams feel like the officiating has not gone that way it, it, it's one of the the, the foils of being so the foibles of being a, a basketball team you tend <laughs> to think you've been hard done by even if you haven't so it's about making sure that you it's tough to stay purely objective in the moment but just making sure that you have a, a plan in place to deal with perceived injustices Absolutely. Grace George there, so strong with those two steps straight through Shannon Hatch and Izzy Bunyan. She was unable to make the first but got her own rebound. Once again, I've got to just point out she's six foot three and she drew the challenge and some contact with it. Here's Izzy Bunyan linking up with the Archers' offense, taking it herself. Mara with a crashing rebound. And the foul call there. She'll shoot free throws. Uh, maybe a missed opportunity in the 4v3. The, the, there was two defenders were stuck on Mara Marchers Zotti down the other end trying to double team her. They just didn't quite get the spacing right. And, and luckily Mara Marchers Zotti was able to, to clean up there. But I just want to point out again, uh, Oakland's immediately huddling up. Um, as soon as that foul was called, uh, Bessos had looked around and, and was about to complain and realised, no, it's not, it's not worth it. You're not going to change the referee's mind. In they went for the huddle. Uh, even if it's just to make sure that everyone knows the next play, it just helps keep a team organised in it. Uh, and from a coaching perspective, if my team are doing that, always a, always a good sign to make sure that everyone's always on the same page. They know what's going on. You know, if you've got good leaders, you know what to fix. Absolutely. Fantastic for fans to see as well. Nobody likes to see people swarming the referees. Here is Cassidy Gould generating a fast break with nothing but her own pace. Here is George straight off that back rim, but they're able to get it back. Georgia Smith's going to take that one every day of the week. The three is good. Could this be a turning point for the Oakland Wolves? The Archers trying to make sure that is not the case. Abby Yunk around the corner, finding Hatch off the cut. A perfect shot down close. Shannon Hatch and Abby Yunker connecting so beautifully there. Yeah, not, not really enough space to, to get that off but, uh, and to get the pass off either, but they managed to make it work. Unbelievable pocket pass as the pace displayed by George there. She seems to be really feeling it in this quarter. Closing out on the shooter once again. 
Archer's able to retain it on the offensive boards. Mara Machazotti got two on her. Got to find the pass. Draws the contact. Well, what a flurry over the past minute or so. Pace on both ends. Intensity. Tom, this is a fantastic game of basketball, no matter the deficit. No, and this is what fans like to see as well. They do like to see tempo. They like to see skills on display. Um, you know, they, they like to see the ball go up and down. Um, you know, depending on your own coaching philosophy, you might not. But but from a fan's perspective, they definitely rather see a lot of up and down, a lot of action than, than sort of long offences and, uh, and sort of whatever, whatever shots they come. Izzy Bunyan hits the huge answer back three there. Abby Yunker again with a strong line drive around the corner, finding the open Bunyan. And that brings the Archers lead back to 18. Casty Gould refusing to quit on the other end. And timeout called. No substitutions here. Mara Machizotti dropped out just before that last play. Lara Hablin coming in. Maybe he needs to cool down a little. And it looks like the, the walls have gone a little bit smaller to potentially sort of match that. In the sense of Daisy puts a, a guard coming in for, for Carroll State, who seems to be playing a bit more of a forward role for the Wolves today. Lauren Saiki trying to go left, so strong. The huge block from George. She's been on a mission in this quarter. And looking to prove me right, she does. Well, that is a tough take. What a sequence. You can just see how much the, the Wolves bench enjoyed that block. And then, well, you couldn't see on camera, they were going crazy after that tough reverse take. But that's an all-action sequence, and that's exactly what you need from your star players. Absolutely, this Australian trio of superstars. Well, there are the Wolves, and that's why the Archers cannot rest for one minute. All of a sudden, it's just a dozen. And it seems a little fragile, Tom. Yeah, that's a really nice sequence there from the Wolves. Just getting out in transition, you know, if you can't if you can't hit your shots in your half court, what can you do? You, you, you make sure that you're, you're playing defense properly, obviously, but if you can leak out and score in transition, just take the lid off the basket, watch a couple drop through. Then all of a sudden, the next time you take the three, you've made two laps and, and you feel a lot better about it. it it's sort of the classic thing, if you can either get to the line or get a layup, you're more likely to make your next shot. I don't know if the maths proves that, but that's what every single player feels like, and, and it looks like that's proved the case here. Absolutely, momentum, such an enormous thing in sport, but nothing quite like basketball seems to be dictated by that swinging metronome of momentum. A couple of huge shots there from Casty Gold. It was unbelievable, that final one, curving her body to fit into that tiniest of gap. And the archers have to find some answers for these Wolves looking to blow the house down. Boo hiss. <laughs> uh, Cassidy Gold has, has, you know, has been playing really well this season um, and, and you know, she looks like she'll, she'll probably end up at least matching her season average if she continues like this but probably more impressively six off offensive rebounds for, for Cassidy Gold and really generating extra looks for the Wolves. Yeah, unbelievable play from her all afternoon. Here is Abby Yanko. She's had a good quarter herself. The entry pass, just a little too obvious there. And George turns into the contact and puts that up with ease over the smaller guard. And then the, the Wolves have come out in full court pressure here, which, you know, if you've got four guards plus one of the biggest guards there is acting as your centre, uh, should should easily give you the opportunity to at least give it a go and, and try and apply some pressure, try and take some time off the clock for the, for the Archers' offence, take away the momentum and also potentially allow you to get a steal and, and go the other way. Lara Havling unable to get that three up, took it early in the shot clock, felt good about it clearly, but it's Archer's ball from the dead ball. Shannon Hatch on this right-hand side, looking to dictate. Shanahan with a handoff to Saiki. Happy to pull up, has been all day. It's been butter all day. Lauren Silky Saiki. Is that her fourth pull up from that sort of range? She's, uh, she's on fire with that today. And, and the way she does it looks so languid, it looks so casual. It looks like she fades away to the left or the right. You know, it doesn't look anything like a typical textbook. And yet, she's so good at it that I hope the, the kids in the front row are, are watching and paying attention. Absolutely, Lauren Saiki, an example for all who wish to learn about guard play. 
a lack of awareness from the archers there and luckily they get away with it Izzy Bunyan unaware of the charging defense and a foul called the archers get away with what could have been a big lapse of judgment there yeah that's that's not great play Shanahan trying to go for the long skip pass but Daisy Porter was just waiting waiting she knew she wanted them to throw that pass she didn't want to be there too early you wait like a like a shark and then pounce but um, that's the, the worst analogy I've ever I've ever made there the sharks don't pounce but um, it's sort of the deliberate ploy there to, to bait the pass and then go and try and steal it and you know she, she probably should have finished that you can see the tactical nuances from the Wolves coach coming into play to try and win back this lead here is Shanahan driving at George drawing the foul just as the ball was stolen the Wolves not happy with these referees today no, they, they, you know both those last two were fouls and and they're also allowing them to play a little bit uh, and also in, in mitigating circumstances traditionally there are three referees for a WL game as we can see on screen there are just two today so their job is also made harder the level of play and the pace of play in WBL is that we should have three referees and, and to only have two makes it makes it a bit of a struggle another foul call this time on Georgia Smith who made sure to make her feelings heard by Lauren Saiki who really took a big hit there grimacing as she stands uh, sorry I'll just say uh, just set my headphones off for a second just to try and hear in on what the referee's saying and uh, and the, uh, the gist of it was uh, that there wasn't a, a flop and that the decision should be left to the to the referee um, Georgia Smith showing a little bit of frustration at, at well, like a couple of times today but I think also when there's a, a flurry of fouls in quick succession it can it can really build up on a team and you've got to make sure that you adapt to that uh, and take it in stride and and in fairness you know maybe I have a slight bias but it did look like those last three were fouls and, and that one on the sideline is a 50-50 you have to call something either way you can't really hit the deck like that and, and not have a foul call um, so maybe are done by maybe not but um, just making sure that you have the tools as a team to deal with situations like that well as long as we're all taking the referee's word for it we're happy Casty Gould on the break again finding the disgruntled Georgia Smith and no luck from the three-point line for her Shanahan has been instigating a fair bit of play in this past few minutes Laura Habling turning down the handoff to Izzy Bunyan but steps out of bounds and it will turn over to the Wolves I like a fake handoff it's really good defense to yeah, it's it's tough sometimes to deal with the with the handoff and especially the fake handoff if you're looking to uh, potentially switch or even just stay with the, the, the bodies in the way that was really good defense there Shannon Hatch making sure to keep that pressure up high on the court here's George she sees an angle what a double clutch layup that is by the Aussie international she has been fantastic today impact felt and all stages quick hands there again almost stolen away Shannon Hatch finds some space but misses everything and unfortunate couple of shots for Shannon Hatch there but you've got to just think about George what an enormous layup that was in terms of the impact on the standings of the game yeah the the handoff into pick and roll option is uh, is a really effective play to have uh, it, it means that extra defenders have to be involved it's not as easy to switch it's got the size really oh that's a, a lovely size up a little bit of hesitation just brings the ball up a little bit Lauren Psyche stands up and bang she goes it's excellent both team offense but especially individual offense there Wolves driving once more draw the foul lazy hands there from Shanahan draws the whistle both teams in a huddle now is this good for both sides then Tom by your uh, yeah huddle, huddle no, I, I think I think both teams need it as well um, I, I look looks like uh, it was actually I think it was actually called on potentially on psyche there I don't know if that's just a uh, if, if there's something that we've not seen I think I thought it was Shanahan as well um, I think it would only be Lon Psyche's uh, second foul, so it doesn't change the complexion of the game too much. Um, but, you know, both teams making sure this is a really important period of play. The archers go on a little bit of a run here, it goes back to 15 or 16, it becomes a lot harder to take, take away, or even up to 20 potentially. If the Wolves go on a run, wow, we've got a fourth quarter on our hands. Well, missing the layup, but the height 
of these Wolves, enabling second and a third chance. And once again, the foul given away, a lack of discipline there showed by Lara Habling. Uh, dis discipline is absolutely the word I was going for there. Um, yeah, just, just not a necessary foul. You've got the size advantage. Beth Sarsen's not known for her work in the post. In fairness, she's great at many things, but she's probably not going to be posting up Lara Habling. So you just stay upright. You've got the size advantage. And if she scores a hook over you, then so be it. Sometimes that's just how basketball goes. But now you've got a really good free throw shooter on the line. And someone who, if they get a rhythm, could knock down three threes in three possessions Easy. and really change the nature of a game. That, that's something that will really benefit the Wolves. Uh, she knocks down two on, on what we consider to be a tough rim. And that will really boost her confidence going forwards. Absolutely. It's a double-digit lead, but only ten. Lauren Psyche just taking a couple of seconds to set herself. Abby Yunker took no time, got the ball and turned, and Lara Habling, well, I thought Lara Habling got the last touch on that, but the referees call it in favour of the archers. George, unhappy to say the least. No, I'm going to back the, the referees call that. I thought that Habling had a couple of tips, and then there's just one one little hand just, just, on, just on that last bit. And... and and from from our perspective, if the referee's right there and the, the bench and the coach are further away, you know, the referee is she a paid impartial observer. I'll probably take their judgment on that one. Here is Abby Yunker looking to create once more. And it'll be Archer's ball once more. Wolves' intensity on the defensive end has increased in this second half. Their intensity on the offensive end has been unbelievable to see. 22-14 uh, third quarter, uh, and exactly what the doctor ordered for the for the Oakland's Wolves. Just making sure they just head their way back into this game, and, and when the deficit's like this in the fourth quarter, you're probably not that stressed. Ryan Saiki took that shot with a defender all over her. Lauren Saiki wins it back off the Shannon Hatch pick. Shannon Hatch pulling it up from the mid range, and Lara Hamling with the second chance points. And if they can get that steal, oh, almost, that was about to be two very big plays in a row. If you force a couple of turnovers and score off them, it just totally changes the momentum. And, uh, and it forces the steal there. The, the pressure up the floor leads to the turnover later on. And, uh, and, and this is probably a bigger momentum swing than I, than I think people might realise here. If they, if they can just capitalise on this one possession, it probably takes a lot of the sting out of the, the last 45 seconds or so. Fantastic there. You just saw the pictures of Shannon Hatch. Really important to remember that as a basketball player, when maybe your shot isn't going down, you can still impact the game. And she has done exactly that. Another huge block from George on Habling. Just not having any luck in that matchup. No, uh, the, the Wolves went to a zone there. Yeah, and, and uh, of course, Izzy Bunyan brings the arms down there. She was perfectly vertical. She brings the arms down, and, and that's always going to be a foul. The Oakland's Wolves just went into a zone there. Um, but La La with Lara Habling's shot, she's, she's got a relatively slow release and, and the size of George um, probably might have been better to either fake and go or, or pass and, and try and see if you can cut past her there. But it will be interesting to see if the Wolves lean on this zone a little bit more given that the you know Izzy Bunyan's hit, hit two threes, but the Archers are, are two of ten from the three-point line. And while the Wolves aren't faring too much better from out there, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see whether or not the... The, the Wolves go for it a bit more given the Archer's reticence it seems to shoot threes absolutely with the size and length on their roster you'd assume they'd be quite happy to be closing down some of these shooters as well well it's an 11 point deficit here just turned to 10 after that last free throw Shannon Hatch inbounding bringing the ball up is Abby Yunker. Yeah, so the Wolves look like maybe they drifted us maybe into a slight zone pressure there and then here we go back into what looks to be some form of maybe one, two, two to the zone. They, I can't quite tell, to be honest. It seems to be all over the place. Shannon Hatch has got one place in mind, and that's the bottom of the basket. A really big three-pointer there. The confusion in the zone defense, and, it, and they made to pay for it. Shannon Hatch. Well, 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 Shannon Hatch. And Izzy Bunyan with a heave attempt as the buzzer rings around Archer's Arena. Cardiff Met finished with a huge three from Shannon Hatch. What a fantastic quarter that was. And here we see Abby Yunker turning around. That pass out to Izzy Bunyan. 
nothing but net. Casty Gould, this was fantastic. The athletic lay. Yeah, and the little, the little pass fake to the corner just shifted Izzy Bunyard's body weight and, and gave her that lane to go to the hoop. It didn't look like much, but an incredible skill levels there. Shanahan sets this one up. Lauren Psyche with that whimsical style moving in and pulling up with nothing, nothing but net on that shot. No, and there are, there are some people in basketball who believe that she should have just taken that as a three. Um, I lean slightly more towards the what do you like as a shot type of thing. You know, if you're good at shooting from somewhere, we'll just take that. Well, that one from George, that might just be the play of the game. Turn in the corner, and of course the steal here from Shannon Hatch. So vital to end this quarter in a good swing. Shannon Hatch unable to knock that down, but Lara Habling was there just to clean it up. Abby Yanka so involved in this quarter. Her ability to move ball in hand. Such a massive asset for the Archers and Shannon Hatch. Possibly the Archers MVP so far this year, wouldn't you say? Sure. Yeah, I think it is. It's probably a close run thing between her and, and Lauren Psyche, but of Shannon course. Hatch brings such leadership. Um, no, she's not shot great today, but she's still on 12 points, 12 rebounds with plenty of time to go. And she's she's managed to get a couple of minutes rest, which means she, she should be a little bit, hopefully a little bit fresher for that fourth quarter from the from the Archer's perspective. George not letting any entry passes into her area. She's so dominant on the defensive end. Yeah, she's, she's really showing athleticism down there. And it looks, it looks like the Oakland Wolves have gone back to man-to-man -to -man defense. It'll be interesting to see if they toggle between or if they seem to stay in man. Abby Yunker found space there. Miscommunication. The defense misread that. One switched, one stuck. And there we are. Here's George looking to do the same again. She's just driving into traffic, Tom. Yeah, she, she managed to get the step there, and, and Archer's help was a bit too late and a little bit too handsy. Uh, but down the other end, it, it looked like they, yeah, like you say, they, they were going to switch, and it looked like George got just got stuck in the mud. So really good from her to sort of make up for that, make up for that down this end. Well, she sets the tone for these Wolves on that defensive end. She's got to stay disciplined. She misses the first. And she, she, she plays with a little bit of, of, little bit of fire, a little bit of a aggression, a little bit of spikiness. And I, and I quite like that for one of your key players to be that sort of desperate to win. Uh, it really, really sort of sets a tone, I think, also for the rest of the culture. But of how course. desperate is she to win? We better be pretty close to the same, the same desperation to, to go for victory. We talk about it a lot in basketball. Asmara with technique on display that's a very difficult finish dab to for the post player to be going underneath the basket and then reverse lay up that with a little bit of spin on it that's a really difficult take well her name is Mara Marchesotti she's done it all before George driving into traffic once again gets the foul yeah, Izzy Bunyan picking up her fourth foul on that one. She, while she was technically straight up, she she left the ground in one place and she would have landed in another. So the, the referees often refer to that as like a, an A to B. Mm. If you're going to jump, you have to go straight up in your cylinder. You can't take off somewhere and land somewhere else. So while she was straight up, that, that is a foul. And given that's her fourth foul, interesting call here from the archers. Do they keep her in there and trust her? Or do they do they take her out and give her a breather? Looks it looks like they're going to trust her. Absolutely. Well, these are the moments where she has to prove that trust is in the right place. Yeah, and it's a good learning curve for her as well. To, to can she can she? I, I wouldn't be surprised if she she managed to foul out the end. But could she could she get through it a little bit? Well, Psyche coming on. Well, Izzy Bunyan will sit at the bench perhaps just an executive decision there from Steph Collins to take the the chance out of her hands yeah and may, maybe it's just a, a few minutes three four five minutes just to make sure that she's in there for some of the the crunch time when someone's on four fouls you sort of have to accept that their chance are they probably will foul out had a couple of players on four fouls earlier they didn't foul out you have your plans ready if they do um, but but you also acknowledge that occasionally someone just needs to keep playing till they either foul out or until they get the job done Mara Working hard, just about able to keep that one with the archers. Noren Psyche unable to sink the buzzer beater. Yeah, it looked like she I think a referee called travel just before. I think she slipped. I think she slipped her pivot foot on that step through. 
Um, but the yeah, big collision between Smith and, and Mark Chisotti, bodies tumbling everywhere. Mm. It's exactly the sort of action that, that people like to see. George Smith with that shoulder push shot, so unconventional, but you can tell it's her from a mile away. Mara, yes, travel there. Just caught with the ball in hand. Yeah, look like, look like George probably got a piece of Mark Chisotti there, but if, if that's not a foul, then that is definitely a, a, a travel. Uh, Steph Guard is arguing that she was fouled before the travel. Either way, something was, was going to get pinged there. But from the arch perspective, you kind of don't worry necessarily about what Mara is doing there. You need to think more, how's our structure against the pressure? There, there was one guard and one big. And, you know, if you want one guard, you probably want it to be Lauren Psyche, who's got that speed and that skill to be able to handle, just be able to beat anyone herself. They, they probably need to think a little bit more about the, the discipline of their, of their press break rather than that individual instance of Mara turning it over. Well, Mara slightly isolated, of course, with this lineup with Izzy off the bench much smaller outfit for the Met. Here is George Smith. That handle, so distinctive. Yeah, they're looking to play really high on her there on, on that handle just to make sure that she can't take that step back three. Uh, and the delay there causing a, causing a great defensive possession and the shot clock violation. Phenomenal. Everyone on the Archers bench up in celebration at that 24 second violation. I didn't mean to rhyme it as much as I did. Lauren Saiki on cue, Tom. Yeah, you notice they didn't really bring the, the too much pressure against Lauren Saiki there because they know that she can handle it. So uh, you, you just try and maybe move the ball out of her hands. Wolves look like they've dropped back into some form of zone here. It's that pocket pass once again from Abby Yanker. Mara foul called. She is struggling down low. No, she uh, she got she got double team there, and uh, referees have gone for a jump ball. Um, the, the help managed to just come and try and rip it from her hands and get two hands on it before she was able to turn and finish. But you know, really good, uh, really good defensive effort there to to recover down to someone who was likely open for a reasonable look uh, and to force the the jump ball. And they they you know gain the benefits of it. They get to go the other way and get a score. Mm. Casty Gould finding Georgia Smith. You've heard that one before, and I'm sure you'll hear it again. Abby Yunker looking to drive up, finding Psyche, relocates, fakes and goes. Shanahan with her feet planted, happy to go tomorrow once more. Oh, a fantastic turnaround shot down close, Mara Machizotti. Uh, Tor Freeman thought that was a travel but looked like pretty good, pretty good footwork but Mara just taking the time, getting to her weaker hand and a really good finish with her, with her weak hand. Reclaiming the paint, Mara Marchesotti. 64 to 53 in the favor of the Archers here. What a play that was from the restart. Bouncing the ball off the back of Lauren Saiki to take the quick lay. No, and that, that sort of innovation uh, is, is really cool to see. <laughs> you know, those, those are the plays that, that go viral and that's a uh, yeah, really smart play from Beth Sass and, and uh, really a little bit of a lazy reach there by Lauren Psyche, I think, realising that she'd been defeated by some, by some smarts that weren't her. Lauren Psyche here, looking to generate a good opportunity. Score is below double digits, so this is a huge possession for the Archers. Shannon Hatch recovers takes the mid-range and bounces out again. That touch not quite been there. And the curse remains. Yeah, that's a tough day. Shannon Hatch is going to miss two of those in a row. That's, that's not her MO. Georgia Smith, the entry pass to Grace George, just too tall. Almost think that's impossible from what we've seen today. But the pass too high for Grace George. Yeah, too high. Just a, just a fraction behind as well. I'd like to lean back a little bit and and if she had managed to catch it, she'd have been in a very awkward situation. Um, but, you know, I think as a coach, you probably rate the, the aggressive intent to try and find your one of your biggest and best players really close to the hoop. I think you've got to, you've got to be a fan of that. Lara Habling with a great step through, finds Shanahan open, and Shanahan misses it all. Here is Cassidy Gould, pushing the pace, and a beautiful dish 
As the Wolves take it down to six. Yeah, really. Uh, what a really rated there from Cassidy Gulls. The way that on that first dribble, she just pushed it really far out in front of her and sprinted. Gave herself a lot of momentum and uh, a really nice fake from, from Bess Arson. And again, we can see Gould, that speed in transition is amazing. This is a fast break machine from the Wolves. Timeout called by the Archers as this lead has slipped and slipped. And we now find ourselves in a two possession game. Cardiff Men Archers 64, the Oakland Wolves 60. And this is massive for both teams in the playoff rankings. Wolves playing with some serious desperation. I'm not, uh, I don't know if the Archers you know, feel that desperation, but it's certainly key for them to learn to close out games after being a big. They were up big against Manchester. They managed to hold on. Um, you know, this is one of those ones where if they can come and finish strong, uh, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be golden, but they need, to, they need to learn how to close games out. That fast break from Casti Gould seeming like a bit of a cheat code here. George so quick that height at the forward spot enabling her to be able to drive into the lane and finish over the smaller defender just carnage caused on that fast break from Castigal. yeah she's not had a great day shooting herself she's she's four of 12 from the field she's seven of seven from the free throw lines so when she's got there she's really made it count but 15 rebounds seven offensive rebounds so getting extra possessions for her team and then eight defensive rebounds and it, it feels like after every single one of those defensive rebounds she's been over the halfway line within seconds four assists two steals she has been like you say causing carnage every time she gets down the floor uh, and she seems to be a real threat she also enables the shooters to go out in space so George can run to the rim Gould's pushing it Sarsen and Smith can space Porter can space uh, it's, a, it's a really nice set of players for that fast break and, and Gould is the key to it and she's having a, a bit of a stormer in that in that area today Shannon Hatch with the inbound play to Abby Yanka if they can break through this trap there may be space Abiyanka with a cut to back door, Lauren Saiki can't find her. Happy to take a couple seconds longer. Uses the screen. Drew contact twice there. And the call on the shot. Yeah, yeah the first one is like I was earlier. Like they're letting them play a little bit with the with the on-ball defence and, and what might be considered hand-checking or, or blocking. I, I don't mind that at all, but basketball is a physical game and, and one bump is it one bump where, where you've not gone well without yourself is, is probably fair. She just got her hand caught in the cookie jar there. Uh, Psyche turned the corner, she just got her hand stuck. Um, you know, e e easy call really and, and I think she, she realises that. Well, Georgia Smith having it explained to her by the referee at the bottom of your screens. There's been plenty of discussion back and forth, which it is important to remember is normal and healthy in a basketball game to have those kind of discussions with referees. Yeah, and, and every referee is always slightly different. Uh, uh, the rules of basketball are, are, are written down, but the rules of basketball in that game are always a, a, a little bit different. And, and refereeing myself it, it is also the same thing. Some people like to let people play. Some people like to ping things and keep it as close to the rules as they can. Um, you, ha you have to adapt to whatever the referees have decided the rules of basketball are that day. And, and sometimes the only thing you can do is just ask nicely and calmly for the clarification. Here's George with that step through. And Havling recovers it. A whistle called aggression on the play there. Uh, that, that's a very physical uh, eight or nine seconds there and we can see that. Steph Collins is uh, having a discussion with the referee. Um, it may have gone her way, but I think she's not happy that the first, first two or three in her eyes weren't, weren't called. I mean, if this, if this is how the game is going to be played, it just means that you need to encourage your players to not worry about the officiating. You've got to be stronger. Uh, the Archers' interior defence, thanks to George, has been taking a beating all afternoon. But can they finish out strong? Lauren Saiki going back to that mid-range pull-up has worked out so well today but it can't work out this time. The outlet pass all the way from the baseline to the trailing George. What a play from the Wolves. Yeah, I think you could hear the cries of Abby as, uh, as, the, as the attacker sneaked in behind, but wow, that is a brilliant fast break. Offensive rebound from Shannon Hatch cancels out all of it. Once again, a player out in acres of space for the Wolves and Lauren Saiki. Again, I'm going to say that word, ill-disciplined in her attempt to block it and gives away the and one. Oh, really, really sort of good floor running, especially after the score and, and Beth Sarson with the, with the tough finish. But you probably shouldn't be giving up transition points after you score. But I think that, that's one thing that will really 
If we wait, Steph Collins said to Barry and, and Luke Strong there, like you can't you can't put the ball in the hoop and then they get beat you down the other end. That that's all one of those uh, non-excusables that that coaches have. Here is Shanahan finding Habling and the ball stolen. It'll stay with the Archers. Izzy Bunyan checking in here. Like we said, a, a five-minute breather and she comes back in. It's probably the the right sub. Well, the reference earlier, uh, George blocked Habling and then uh, that time Habling faked and would have got past about a fantastic hand there by by George, sort of bailing herself out after the, the little bit of a, a jump. Um, sort of really good skills to recover that. Some of think it's a foul, but at this level they can see that that's just a, just a clean strip. But nice play from Habling, knowing that she wanted to jump and that she'd have the drive. Here is Shannon Hatch off the inbound. Now they've got Izzy Bunyan, they're going to use her. She takes the three early and misses everything. Maybe needed just that one to, to warm up. Am I being nice? It can, uh, it can be tricky as a, as a player. She's played a lot there, so you find it, it, be, it would be very tricky for, for even someone like, a, you know, if Cammy Barone or Molly James was to get put into the game for the, for the archers or, you know, if, if they were to suddenly bring Kizzy Spence or... Mm. Or, or Foster into the game. That would be a really difficult situation. For Izzy Bunyan, she's probably still quite warm. Travel called on George. And the Archers, faithful, give out a shout in appreciation for the referee's decision. Yeah, good defence. Just getting the hands on there and, and absolutely a travel. I don't think there's any, any complaints from anyone there. Yeah, we've had a couple of 50-50 calls today. That was not one of them. We've got another switch here for the Archers. Lara Havling taking to the bench and Mara Machizotti returning so the height has returned for the archers Bunyan and Mara returning for these key crucial final four minutes and every coach has their lineup so they go yeah this is probably the lineup and, and you know, basically the, the Wolves have played that for almost the entire half and, and for the archers this is definitely it Abby Yunker sinks the three what a shot from the shooting guard. The Wolves picking it up quite quickly here. Saiki ducking under the screen. So it's a massive shot from Abiyanka, her first three of the day, and just gives a little bit of breathing room, and we can see the energy has just changed in the building. Georgia Smith with the answer back. These Wolves will not quit. These Wolves will not go away. The deficit taken from 20 to just two. Wow, <laughs> this is uh, this is a great game of basketball. Uh, high quality players going back and forth, and we can see what it means to both teams to be in this playoff battle. Shannon Hatch down the hatch, the mid-range pull-up working for her once more. Georgia Smith going to challenge right at the rim. The block called a foul under the basket. I think that was. A bit of contact called, but the Archers fan base maybe didn't see that as well as we did. No, uh, the, I've just taken one of my uh, headphones off to hear the noise, and wow, it is getting loud in here, and you could hear the boos ringing out. It's like being at the pantomime. Uh, the referees have confirmed their decision. I don't know if they were either discussing uh, clean or clean or foul, or, or even foul or, or unsportsmanlike foul, just to be sure, but um, I, I think I'd probably agree with, with that call. But the, the atmosphere in here has changed over the last couple of minutes, and it is, it, this must be so much fun to play in for, for both teams, the away team coming here, trying to ruin everyone's day, the home team with the fans behind them and, uh, and, and trying to get into the playoffs. It, it, this, is, this is why we love the WBBL. Well, perfect from the line on that trip, Georgia Smith. They've been fantastic from there all afternoon. Izzy Bunyan instigating this crucial, crucial possession. As I'm free throws are a massive reason why they're in the game. They've, they've made a match oh. to take 27 free throws. An illegal screen called on Mara Marchizotti. She went down a little easily, but there definitely was contact. Yeah, I, I'm keen to have a, another look at this one. I, I'm not, I'm not necessarily convinced by by that call. I think uh, they was pretty much set. She may have been slightly moving, but I think that that's probably a, a harsh one. But she's now she's now fouled out of the game with that as her fifth foul. Well, 
Georgia Smith trying to find that cut, but Abby Yunker a step ahead. And the pace on display here from the American guard. A really good defense from Lava Hapling on the ball there. That's not her matchup, but she did a really good job there. And then Abby Yunker on the help get the steal. Abby Yunker with a rainbow shot. Shannon Hatch misses everything on the second attempt. And then once again, the outlet pass finds George. And the offensive rebound, not quite collected. The hustle on display. Oh, this is a big shot. Casty Gould off the rim. Referees yet to uh, point one way or another. It, it's gone out of bounds. She's not 100% sure. And in these circumstances, if you're not 100% sure as the referee, you go for the, for the jump ball. She has to call it as soon as it goes out of bounds. If you're not 100% sure, she's gone for the, for the jump ball. And I think that's the, that's the right call there. Georgia Smith trusting her teammate there with the three. Great effort for Lara Habling on the on the box out there. Uh, a really important one because George would just catch that and put that straight back in. But we can we can feel the the atmosphere and and the tension on court has gone to a, another level here. This is uh, this is going to be a very exciting last two minutes. All right, Abby Yanka with the point guard duties once more. A minute forty remaining. Izzy Bunyan faced with bodies every direction Shannon Hatch found the pass and Abby Yunker found the net just two Wolf players getting in each other's way there that absolutely kills you as a coach but way to take advantage of it from the archers perspective Casty Gould that vision on display again Izzy Bunyan with the pressure and it's archers ball someone on the deck putting their body on the line for that steal just clipping Porter's leg on the way past what an incredible defensive effort and we can we can see in the corner the guys ready for their game and they are going crazy they love this and this is what we're saying at half time everyone here supporting everyone wow this this place is about to go bonkers well Archer's Arena is on its feet Steph Collins with the ball in hand she lived for these situations as a player. I, I, I was lucky enough to coach and, and coach with Steph for a year, and we had a, well, we had an, I'm pretty sure we had an overtime game here against Oakland. But she she loved those close moments. Well, her experience flowing through this Archer's side. It is a two-possession game. Izzy Bunyan finding Abby Yunker, who's had such a fantastic match today. Even if it doesn't show up in the box score, Lara Habling knocks it down, and the lead is increased to six. Yeah, that is a clutch shot under a little bit of pressure. Awkward place. Casty Gould with the circus pass, and Georgia Smith reminds everyone that there is still time to go. I don't know what else this game has in store for us, because that is a big time shot. Abby Yunker directing traffic. Lauren Saiki calling for the screen on her right. Almost lost the ball there. Fantastic ability to retain it. Whistle drawn before the shot. Yeah, and that's what the situation looks like. Uh, looks like Beth Sarson called for the hand checking there. Um, oh, look, the, the referees deemed that Lauren Saiki was going up to the to the hoop so that uh, looks like she'll head to the line 4-2 I thought it was just going to be a shot clock reset and that makes it makes it a tricky foul with three seconds left that you'd have had almost a full shot clock th for the Wolves and, and, and maybe the better choice would be to let them go but also you know let's see if she can earn it at the free throw line I don't want to add to the pressure but these are enormous free throws for Lauren Psyche the first one is down and I think you can see the tension on some faces in the crowd. They just uh, they're desperate for these to desperate for these to go down. A deep breath. And it's two for two. Clutch, clutch. A very quick timeout call by Oakland. The coach now having some words with the referees also. This he's uh, the, just checking. He's got, he looks like he's going to advance the ball. Um, I would, you know, I probably would. I probably would in the same circumstances. Um, sometimes, you know, the referee says, and you go, "I'll tell you at the end of the timeout." You don't want to give the the opposition any chance to work out what's going on. But in these circumstances, you've got to advance it. The debate will be here in his mind as he's called that timeout. Do we go for a quick two? 
and, and cut it down to three and see if we can get the ball? Or do we go for a three, see if we can cut it down to two, and then we're still within range after some free throws? It's going to be a very difficult choice. Um, I, I, I hope maybe he's got a look that, that probably gives him both. Uh, maybe a handoff to a shooter for George to see if you can turn down the turn downhill from an archer's perspective. Just don't foul. Just even if they go, even if they're going to go for a layup, maybe just don't foul. I think Steph Collins does another timeout. Advance the ball and, and just play play sensible. Got to keep those hands where they are meant to be. Discipline the word for the archers here. Three point shot would be enormous for the Wolves. There was a time when they were one for thirteen. They're not much better now, but they have increase their percentage six for 32 they've also hit them when it matters i think you'd probably rather start cold and finish hot than the other way around they've done a great job of battling their way back into this game uh, what have what have we got here looks like uh looks like they've probably i've got george on this side maybe a post look here and, and a shooter look at the the top george smith trying to find space she's got it goes for the sidestep three is he bunyan with a huge rebound happy to get fouled oh, they call jump, the jump, jump ball. ball jump ball she just uh, looked like she maybe got fouled before that uh, I, I think there was probably a foul but they've gone jump ball and that's going to be the oakland's ball they've, they've still got a chance here steph collins raging on the sideline yeah i think i think i i think i might be as well but yeah oakland's get another chance to draw something up on the baseline, you're, you're, you're definitely looking at some form of look uh, for two from here. Probably probably some form of back screen action for George, I would guess. Just get the points on the board. See if you can force someone who doesn't want to shoot free throws to shoot them and try and extend the game a little bit longer. From Coach Collins's perspective, how might she be preparing for this? I understand that she would have that insight, as you do, as to what the coach might be trying to do. But how do you really prepare for so many different opportunities with such little time to go. Yeah, I think with, with the benefits of uh, the, the video platform Synergy, um, they get you get to be able to select uh, what you want to look at. So, you know, she may have been able to look at, right, here, here are all their inbounds. And, and especially if there's a close game, and again, these guys played a close game previously, there may be something she could pick up from that. Um, you also just have to think about sort of who's on who's on the opposition team. So for archers, they've got a lot of size. If they, you know, obviously Mara's fouled out, but in general they still play with a lot of size. So you think, okay, they're more likely to go inside. You now they've got one. You know, Wolves have got the biggest size on the floor. They've also got four shooters, so that allows them different options. Uh, you've got to decide if you want to go man or zone or try both, and and how you want to mess with the opposition. Um, there's still a lot of choices, even though it's not your ball. 18.1 on the clock. Five points to deficit. The Wolves find Georgia Smith. Out of bounds! Shannon Hatch with the perimeter defense pushes Georgia Smith just past the line. Yeah, look, a quick handoff and a sprint out to the corner for three, looking to, to try and cut it to two. Uh, Georgia Smith checking out. Looks like Carol State's come in probably to foul, in, in all honesty. Uh, it looks like they, they may look to, yeah, get, get Abby Juncker. Uh, and this is where it's really tricky as a defending team. If you don't foul correctly, unsportsmanlike foul, game over. It's where you have to go for the ball and then also and also try and try and foul at the same time. Interesting there, Georgia Smith had two opportunities to take a three-point shot, unable to do so. That three has been so evasive for them, but you just had a feeling. And Abby Yunker misses the first. And uh, Georgia Smith straight back in. Karazay in just a foul. Looks like may maybe she'll end up doing it again. From the Wolves' perspective, they have to go down and score this time. If they don't score within a few seconds on this possession, that is it. Abby Yunker sinks the second. It's a six-point game. Here is Georgia Smith. Finding Daisy Porter. The rainbow shot goes out of bounds. Archer's ball with four on the clock. Yeah, I'd consider this broadly, broadly game over. They've just got to get the ball in safely, hold on to it strong. And uh, the foul, yeah, I, think, uh, I think that looks like it might be it. Lauren Psyche knocked down both her clutch free throws before. Even if she doesn't hear six points in two seconds, it, 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 I think it might be impossible. Absolutely, and when you look back to those free throws, they were so important. We knew it at the time. 
considering the inability of the Wolves to really close down this lead right at the death. It may have all been different had that not been the case. Well, the first is off. George and Smith in the front court for the Wolves. And Psyche makes it seven. Casty Gold not going to heave it, lets the clock go out. And that's the end of what might be the best game I've seen all season. A fantastic game of basketball between the Archers and the Wolves. Who's your player of the game, Tom? That's a tricky one. I'm probably, I'm probably giving it to... Maybe oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the. I'm. I'm torn here. I'm I put you on the here. spot. I put you yeah, on the spot. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, Kirsty Gould, you know, dictated the terms and was a massive part of that comeback. You know, the way that she pushed the floor, she rebounded, she distributed. You know, uh, Grace George's size caused issues. Um, you know, she didn't shoot the three ball very well, but her two pointers were were there. Um, but I think I'm probably going with Lauren Psyche. It's got uh, to be. Know, uh, uh, very efficient. 21 points on 7 of 14 from 2 and 7 of 10 from, from 3. She didn't distribute like she normally does today no. because they forced that to not be an option. But when they adapted their pick and roll coverage, she made them pay. Uh, and then some clutch free throws at the end. I think Lauren Psyche probably takes home the, uh, the MVP on us. Lara Habling there. That pull-up jumper from the left-hand side was so crucial. And even here, when George Smith hit, hit this three, we were all up in arms. I couldn't believe that that was happening, and the game was so tight once more. But the Archers pulled through. Archers Arena was bouncing this afternoon, and it has all gone the way of the Archers. Playoffs looking a little more, little more likely after today's victory, whereas the Oakland Wolves are down to 14 losses on the season. The final score, Cardiff Met 80, Oakland Wolves 73.